Mickey. It can't be walking and talking one minute and then made out of straw and twigs the next. Can't it just? What's this then? Just tell me if it isn't straw. Boy! You put that bad stuff in back in my stomach where it belongs, or I'll knock the stuff in out of you. What did I tell you? I said it was alive. I never said it wasn't alive, Manu. I just said it was made out of twigs and straw. You zoom in and teachers is just as aggravated as the ones I come away from. Well, of course I've made it twigs and straw. And I was alive just when I wants to be. Hey, who's this supposed to be? Who's that? Who's that indeed? Shall I tell him or were you? Don't ask me. Damnation donkeys, don't tell me you don't know neither. He's not only aggravating, he's ignorant as well. That's his absentee ship, the crowman, that there is. That's not the crowman. Not the crowman what lives here. No, that's the crowman what lives there. The crowman what lives there, where I was before I came here. That's his eminence, the crowman, that there is. His eminence what made old Wurzel. Yeah, that's the one what breathed me, so I could walk and talk, see. As a real, live, walking, talking scarecrow, because of him. And I bet you'll be bumps whistled if you've ever seen one of them before. Bet you we have. Tons of times. Bet you haven't. Yes, we have. Dang me, you can't have done. We say we have. Lots. We'll show you one now if you don't believe us. Right, Manu? Right. All right, then, clever clogs, show us. <laughs> When will you learn it's your duty to stay put? Ah, oh, that ain't no scarecrow. That's that bad daft human what talks no more sense nor what I does. Well, he's scaring away the birds, though, isn't he? If he's scaring the birds, then he must be a scarecrow. Yeah, well, he ain't. He ain't no proper scarecrow. We said we'd show you a walking, talking scarecrow, didn't we? Well, there he is. Well, he shouldn't ought to be allowed, that shouldn't. Humans pretending to be scarecrows. I don't see why not. The scarecrows can go around pretending they're humans. Yes. Well, it ain't fair, him doing that. Taking the cups of tea and slices of cake out of the mouths of poor old scarecrows. Fair. Ain't fair at all, that ain't. Shouldn't you to be allowed, that sort of thing? No. You should be hey! oh! Clumsy scarecrow! Oh, hello, Aunt Sally. What you doing here? Oh, my, what I'm doing here? Help me out! Help you out, right? You don't. Oh, <laughs> Right. Whoops, a carrot top. <laughs> there we is. Hey, Aunt Sally. Why for was you wedged up tight in that there wheelie thing? Wedged up tight? I was wedged up tight. I should have thought even an ignorant scarecrow could see the difference between someone who is wedged up tight and a lady what is sitting at her ease watching the parade go by. Parade? Mm. What parade's that then, Aunt? Oh, but, but the military gentleman. The military gent with the drum. What, him? He, he ain't no military gent. He's that there daft human pretending to be a scarecrow, that's what he is. And a pretty poor job he's making of it and all. There's only one way that I knows of to scare birds proper, and that's you're supposed to stand up still like this. I wouldn't be seen dead standing like that. <laughs> I wouldn't even be seen dead talking to someone who stands like that. <laughs> Your Aunt Sally, supposing I were to get hold of one of them drumby things, would you talk to me then, then? I might. Rooney! Rooney, can you hear me? I does that with old test, and I hear you very well. Leave what you're doing for now. I want you to take the trap into C2. And will you feed the old pig before you go? I do that for you with old test, and I look after the old pig right enough. Hey, Mister! Hey, Mister! Bring 
did like your newfangled weedy thing. Yeah, I never did like you pesky birds, neither. But at least I know what to do with you. Caw, 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 you dang pestiferous poopers. Our words are going to scare you. Standing still, moving about, or in a dang way he pleases. Go on, jump off. Get out of it, you black perishes. Uh, our words are will scare you birdies as quick as falling off a planet. <laughs> Done it again, Wurzel Gummidge. Very well. If you won't settle to the employment for which you were fashioned, I shall have to find you something less fashionable. <laughs> You must pull yourself together. Like a thing is that to be left lying around on a public highway? Walk on, Jay. Walk on. along with old toast and minding my own business. When would you believe it? There's this enormous great dolly lying in the ditch. That's no dolly, really. What size of a child would own a doll that big? Been asking myself the very same question since the minute I clapped eyes on it. You know where I think it comes from, really? The Museum of Folk History at Pewaka Waka. Widow Toaston, I think you've hit the nail squared on the head. And that's where it's going back to. Just as soon as I've washed an iron, the poor soul's dress. While well, we're on the subject of wash day, Rooney, did you manage to pick up my shopping in Seatoon? I didn't, no. Mrs. Tewicki says to tell you she's run right out. I think I know the very feather that'll be after having some. Mr. Croman, you at home at all? Sorry about that. You're no beauty, and that's a fact. How did that happen? Ah, Mr. Croman, is it yourself? Uh, yes. Do I strike you as a man who's taken leave of his senses? Well, you're no more mad than any other paddy, if that's what you mean. But I've the distinct impression I've just been kicked by this funny-looking scarecrow. Oh, I see. Oh, well, let me assure you, Mr. Rooney, there is a simple explanation. That is a kicking scarecrow. It has been especially designed to repel small animals of the field. Rabbits, weasels, stoats, and that sort of thing. It doesn't injure them, it simply kicks them out of the way. But how can a scare... Secrets of the trade, Mr. Rooney. <coughs> Here! You just mind what you're kicking. I'm not a stoat nor a rabbit, neither. I'm afraid it hasn't taken to you, Mr. Rooney. Oh, it's taken to me, all right. If you'd care to, have a look round my stock. Yes, we have a wide range of scarecrow wear. The old-fashioned style, sacking trousers and overcoats, is still very popular, particularly with the older farmer. Next to it, we have something much more upmarket for the younger farmer, denim. Very fashionable, as you know. It's a fine-looking garment at that. Yes, that colour combination has proved particularly effective. The starlings won't come with an cooey of it. Here? What does this one here do? It looks as though he's dressed up to do damage to someone. Not unless you happen to be a seagull. He's been designed to scare birds on airport runways and military bases and places of that sort. Yes, and here we have a range of scarecrow parts. As you can see, I endeavour to use only the best materials. Yes, quality manuka. Good strong straw, heart remove for the frame. What do you call this? 
Oh, she's a beauty, isn't she? Yes, I'm very pleased with her. That's my marine head. Don't tell me. To scare away the sharks. Oh, not quite. No, actually, it's to scare away the shags and gulls from the local fishermen's nets. The nose, sir, that's, uh... Well, yes, I always try to use local materials wherever I can. Uh, but you'd get a better idea if you step outside. I've several examples that might interest you. No. no. Is this it, then, is it, sir? Is this the entire extent of your output? Well, these are the only examples of my craft I have to hand, but if you'd like to come back in a couple of weeks... A couple of weeks? Dear me, that'll be a fortnight too late, at the very least. Saints preservers! There's an ugly fellow if ever there was one. You wouldn't want to come face to face with that fellow behind your back on a dark night. Oh, no. A couple of weeks, no use at all. The widow Thurston asked me to come and find you, and it's this afternoon she's after doing a washing. Not a couple of weeks from now. A washing? I still wondered, are you making clothes pegs at all? Clothes pegs? Yeah, you know, them little wooden peggy fellas that stop the washing falling off the line. Yes, I'm well aware of what clothes pegs are, Rooney, but I am not in the habit of manufacturing them. How about a clothes prop, then? You know, one of them tall, long how-do-do's to keep the line in the air. Not that, either. I am the crow man. My sole occupation is the ancient craft of constructing scarecrows. There's not much call for them newfangled things round here. Folk are more inclined to give me a couple of bob to bash me old drum. Oh, they will do when I get it back from the devil that's run off with it. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you, then. <sighs> Suit yourself. Only I think you'll find in these parts a fella hardly makes a living unless he can turn his hand to several things. Good day to you. Uh, wait a moment, Rooney. Uh, how long a clothes prop exactly were you requiring? Oh, it ain't fair, your unfairness. It ain't fair at all. Shh. Well, it ain't fair. As a genuine scarecrow, Mr. Crowman, your eminence, not a mouldy old clothes prop. Don't your tongue, Wurzel. There's a great deal of truth in Rooney's words. If one has to make a living here, one must learn how to diversify. Why well, must it always be poor old Wurzel has to do the deservify? Well, if you'd stuck to the task you were given this morning, Wurzel, you wouldn't find yourself in this position. And besides, if I'm to learn how to make clothes pegs, you shall learn how to be a clothes prop for this afternoon at least. Yes, well, I... Add one more word of complaint out of you, Wurzel, and you shall find yourself learning how to be firewood. And believe me, Wurzel, you would not like that. You would not like that at all. It ain't fair. It ain't fair one digi bit. Me danged arm's getting numbed already. Scarecrow for a clothes prop. <laughs> Certainly makes the ugliest clothes prop I've ever seen. Well, I'll be bums, Rizzled. I'd recognise them clothes anywhere. Seems part savvy's clothes, so is it. Fancy that. The whole world was standing out here, holding his intended clothes up to dry. <laughs> Hang on a minute. If them's my Aunt Sally's clothes, why aren't my Aunt Sally in them? I'll knock a pretty head off her delicate shoulders so I will, walking around without a stitch of clothes on. I'll take him back to it straight away. <laughs> God dang bums for the alarm. I knew it was getting sort of nummy. Come here, you pissy. Where's my Aunt Sally? She must be around here somewhere. Aunt Sally! Aunt Sally! Aunt Sally, you better come out wherever you are. I've got your clothes for you. Aunt Sally! Aunt Sally! You in there? Aunt Sally? You in here, Aunt Sally? Aunt Sally? Oi, you silly sussy! What are you doing? Get away, you beastly pig. Leave my arm alone. Get out of here. 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 Aunt Sally? Aunt Sally? Aunt Sally? I know you're in there somewhere. Aunt Sally! Shove off! Oh, you're in there, is ya? Oh, no, I hate. And don't you dare go looking through this there window, so you'll know about it. <laughs> I know why you doesn't want me to look in through that there window. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I does. Oh, no, you don't, you disgusting scarecrow. And if you want to go trying to find out, you'll get a plop pop chucked at your head. 
Oh, you wouldn't chuck no plant pot, a poor old wurzel who, who loves you best in the old wild world. Ah! <laughs> Never touch me. Here, Aunt Sal, why force you hiding behind that sofa? None of your business. It's because you ain't got any clothes on, in it? No, it ain't. <laughs> it is. You're in your bare wood. Your name. For your information, Wurzel Edro Gummidge, I hate entirely in the hall togethers. I happen to be wearing my unmentionables. What's unmentionables, Aunt Sal? If you don't know, you ignorant turnip headed monstrosity, it's hardly for me to enlighten you. Yeah, well, it just so happens I does know, see? Because last winter when we had that hard frost, the crow man made me a pair of unmentionables. Warm drawers there was, he made them out of old sheep dip sacks. <laughs> Is it what your unmentionables is like, Aunt Sal? Oh, shove off, you disgusting scarecrow! You wouldn't talk to me like that, but this is what I got down here. It's the Prezi, Wurzel. For me? Well, it, it's a sort of Prezi, Aunt Sally. Uh, on, only thing is, it, it's yours already. It's your clothes, it. Hand them over! Say please. Hand them over, Wurzel Ledger will come it, or I'll tear you to pieces with my bare hands, and then I'll, I'll, f I'll feed you to Mrs. Thurston's donkey. Well, that's different. Here you are, then. You gentlemen, turn round. Ah! There's a harm in it. Oh, uh, I forgot about that. Uh, that's my harm, Aunt Sally, just in case you was wondering. And that's my hand at the end of it, and them's my twiggy fingers at the end of that. So I'd be very much obliged if you'd hand it over to me. Hand it back? I wouldn't so much as stoop to pick up the disgusting object up off the floor. Oh, please, Aunt Sally, please. I, I need it just to make the pair up. My dress? My pretty dress? What's happened to my lovely dress? Well, it's been washed, Aunt Sally. That's what's happened to it by that there farming lady. Uh, and it was been held up to dry by your ever-loving words, so what was very honoured and pleased to do it for you. It is awful, and it pongs like a cow shed. No, it don't pong at all, Aunt Sally. Well, it don't pong of a cow shed. It pongs of a pig's diet, perhaps on account of the fact that I dropped it in the pig's wheel. Oh! Oh, don't take on so, Aunt Sal. It'll hardly pong at all by the time it's been dried out properly. All you've got to do is hold it up in front of the... front of the... front of the, that, that smoky, crackly thing what the smoke and flames comes out of. A What's one meaning of yeah, but I, I'd rather you didn't say that word out loud, Aunt Sally. A big, blazing fire, Oh, please, Aunt Sally, please. What a good idea. And there is a fire in here, Wurzel. Only it ain't quite big enough, is it? Not to suit our purpose. Yeah, well, I'd rather you didn't make it any bigger, Aunt Sally. Not just yet. Not until I was gone. I can't make it no bigger, Wurzel. Alas and dreary me. Because I ain't got nothing to stoke it with. Bless my pretty little face and delicate hands. Just the thing. A dirty old bundle of straw and twigs. What a coincidence. Well, it, it ain't just a bundle of straw, straw and twigs, Aunt Sally. That's my arm, if you like to cast your mind back. So give it to you. No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! <laughs> now look what you've done to my arm. The billy goat's eating it for his dinner. Scoff the lot! No. Oh, no. Mr. Crowman! Well, will you look at that? Look at what? That big doll. If I were standing in a court of law, I'd swear I washed and hung that dress out an hour ago. Am I going mad or something? Don't answer that, Rooney, or you'll regret it. Well, I can't take it to the museum in that state. I have to do it all over again. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. For heaven's sake, Wurzel, stop snivelling. Dry your eyes and blow your nose. Oh, beg him your pardon, your magnificence, but I can't. Of course you can. Great heaven, you must have suffered more damage before now than a lost arm. Yeah, well, it ain't that, Mr. Crowman, sir. It ain't that at all. You see, I can't blow my nose and wipe my eyes because the Yankees in my trousers pocket to the side of the one I've got an hand on. 
am I going to do with you, Herschel? I don't know, Your Magnificence. I've set you two simple tasks to perform today, and you've let me down on both of them. There, how's that? Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Crobats. I reckon you might just as well chuck the old of me on the bum 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 on that crackly thing. Old Warsel ain't no use to nobody no more. I've let you down twice, and I've let me Aunt Sally down by mucking up her pretty frock two times. What's the most, Mr. Croman, sir? Two times or twice? Aunt Sally Warsel is deserving of everything she gets. You're right there, your infallibility. My Aunt Sally is deserving of the old wild world. I wish that the crowman that constructed you, Wurzel, had seen fit in his infinite wisdom to provide you with a memory. Only an hour ago, Aunt Sally destroyed your arm. Well, that's because she loves me, your effluence, just as I love her. I follow my Aunt Sally to the ends of the earth. And that's your problem in a nutshell, Wurzel. And my problem in a nutshell, too. I must find some way of setting you a day's work without Aunt Sally crooking her little finger and leading you astray. I reckon that's impossible, your devious death. I'm the crow man, Wurzel. Nothing is impossible. Leave it to me. Thank you, Your Eminence. No need to take on so. Being a scarecrow is something you can be proud of. Once you get used to the idea, that is. He's one of some of my bestest friends, the scarecrows. A soggy boggart, jolly clothes peg, and the old pal daft dead, Sergeant Beatrice. All of them is scarecrows, every man jack of them. And there ain't one of them my nose is ashamed of it. Cut up, you loathsome object! <laughs> You'll love it, Aunt Sally. Out in the open air all day, with no pesky human standing around chucking wooden balls at your head. Covered in fine droppings! That's because you ain't got the hang of it yet. You have to sharpen all around them every now and then, so they doesn't take disadvantage of you. Go on, get out of it, you dang pesky varmint! Go and find another paddock to peck in, you pestiferous pooping! That's what I say. I wouldn't so demean myself for a duchess's ransom. Oh, yes, you would, Aunt Sally. Come on now. All together now with old Wurzel. Get out of it, you dang pesky barmy. Go and find another panic to pet you, you pestiferous poofy. Ah! 